東京都立だったらせめて自分が知ってる人くらいは。It's great seeing that now all of them have now upgraded from that B slash second tier to now first grade A class. And rightfully so, because what did we see in this episode? Sure, I would give my hat off to Editori. That he's a little bit more overpowered than Megumi and Nobara, but Nobara definitely held her own. And the tag team elements that we saw with Nobara and Itatori against two special grade. And let's not forget what happened with Megumi last week. Of course, they're going to move up because when you defeat some powerful, insane villains like that in terms of raw strength and techniques, how do you not move them up the food chain, so to speak? I'm glad we got that little、uh, graduation ceremony for each of them to move up one more spot closer to that special grade S tier. Although I felt like it was already established, and this is why I. I feel like we didn't really need to see it again. But Itatori was conversing with Nobara and he was relaying to Nobara that he felt really guilty about killing these people because it would have been one thing if they were cursed spirits, but it looked like there were people, you know, who unfortunately had the, the special grade within them, right? And Nobara's like, listen, man, even with our combined efforts, it's not like we could have held them down because sooner or later they were going to break out of whatever we would have put them under. So, yeah, we had to kill them. Now, it comes with the territory of being a sorcerer, but. At the end of the day, and, and this is actually what I really enjoyed about Nobara's、uh, speech to Itatori, I can only welcome in so many people around me that I will feel upset or joyous about in my inner circle. So the casual civilian, yeah, I'm going to feel bad, but it comes with the territory. And you know what? I'd rather one person die as opposed to many other people. But we still see this immense guilt and sorrow that Itatori himself is feeling. Even one life is too much. For him, this was the thing I really enjoyed, but I feel like we didn't need because I feel like we got that with Itatori when he couldn't save Junpei's life. Which, if we can talk about standout moments, I think that Junpei thing again, it's different if you're a manga reader, but for an anime only, I did not see that coming. Hell, they even did a great job if you were an anime only showing that OP, and at the end of that song, you saw who Itatori with Junpei. Thinking, oh, he's going to be part of the cast. And it wasn't. They did this amazing bait and switch, and I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. The sheer horror, an intense moment where you saw that editorial black and white screen when he says, Mahito, I'm going to whoop your ass. I mean, how can that not be a standout moment? Everything with Gojo was fantastic. His domain expansion was crazy. All the women,、uh, myself included, love to see him without the blindfold. And that's a good looking man with a broken ability. But what's going to happen in October 31st, where the bad guys feel like, They got this one in the bag, at least with Gojo Sensei. Mother Nature, special grade. I love seeing her in action when Itatori was teaming up with、uh, you know, his brother. I love seeing that engagement as well. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this was a great episode. It's unfortunate that this episode just seemed like a regular old episode and not a season one finale episode. But if you're a fan of Shonen, you have to watch Jujutsu Kaisen. My name is TJ Miles, and as I always say, To be continued. Take care.